Hanoi, the capital city of Vietnam, is going to celebrate its 1,000th birthday anniversary. And with its graceful, ancient, and peaceful features, Hanoi City is truly the pride of Hanoians and those coming here to live. And for the expatriates community coming here, Hanoi does give them special feelings and experiences. And in our show for today, we'll meet with a Canadian guy who will give us his stories about living in Hanoi. Theater is an important part in Thomas' everyday life. Soon after arriving in Vietnam, Thomas set up an amateur theater group. The usual meeting place is at Pugu Cafe on Tong Si Tan Street. Wherever I go and I stay a long time, I start a theater group. Um, I was in China for three years, and so um, where. If I stay a short period of time, I don't start a theater group. I plan to stay in Vietnam for a long time, so I just started this theater group. Um, and I want to do it in a similar way I did it in China. With years of experience in theater, Thomas knows how to make members understand more about acting and get involved in different activities. His enthusiasm wipes any newcomer's reservations. Come on, you gotta talk, you gotta say something. Give me a situation. What's happening? This is a social activity that makes people become closer. Many people now are busy with their work and have less time to socialize with others. This theater group is useful for Vietnamese youth, especially those who want to learn English. I have attended a training class for acting and in fact I have acted in some TV series. I love acting. This is the first time I've visited this theater group, but I already like the games and the situations Thomas created. It's really interesting to me and for all of us. Do you copy me? Copy me. See, I do this. Okay, you do this, right? So before attending the group, hardly anyone knew that Thomas had theatrical talent, and now, having become members, they realize Thomas has further plans for this. Um, you have to guess who is doing the tai chi, and if you guess wrong, you're out. Who's doing it? Who's the person who's doing tai chi? Everybody's following. Who is it? Quickly. You have one minute. Uh, one minute. This theater group is mostly all Vietnamese people, and uh, we try to combine our talents to help the community. Basically, um, we, what are we going to do with the money that we raise? Well, big, bring it back to the community, uh, basically to give it back to um, children in need in Hanoi, whether it be in a hospital, in a burn unit, in a cancer ward, but basically uh, we're devoted to helping children in the community, whether it be Hanoi or in the, in the outskirts of Hanoi. So uh, it's, we want to use our talents and give back to the community. In 2008, a devastating 7.9 magnitude earthquake hit Sichuan province a mountainous region in western China, killing about 70,000 people and leaving over 18,000 missing. At that time, Thomas was there and it felt he should do something. In China, we started a theater group and during the, the theater uh, presentations we did, there was a devastating earthquake that happened in Sichuan province. 75,000 people died and I watched uh, on television, it was very um, very uh, traumatic to watch and I thought we have to do something so our group decided to raise money uh, to um, buy prosthetic devices artificial limbs for children who lost their arms and legs in the earthquake and we raised some money for that and we all combine our talents uh, to uh, to give back to the community so that's what we did in China uh, our organization was nonprofit all and all Chinese people. 
with the performance of his theater group. Thomas raised a few thousand dollars, which went towards helping some dozen children. The money was not much, but it's an example of his attachment to the community. Welcome to your deep dive. Yeah. Ever heard of like using theater to spark social change? It's not as out there as it sounds. You wanted to explore the theater of the oppressed and uh... We're gonna introduce you to someone who like takes this idea to a whole new level. Particularly for young people today, Thomas Giglioni. What's so fascinating is that we're not just talking theory here. We're diving into how Giglioni takes this theatrical approach yeah. and creates like practical tools. Especially in the face of like modern day issues like cyberbullying. It's quite a journey. Okay, so theater of the oppressed. For someone totally new to this. Where do we even begin? Well, picture this. It's the 1960s Brazil. Okay. And Augusto Boll, a theater director, starts to wonder if theater can be more than just entertainment. Interesting. Heavily influenced by the like revolutionary ideas of educator Paulo Freire, who believed in empowering learners to question the world. Right. Boll created this whole new approach. Paulo Freire, he's a big name in education. So how did his ideas about learning actually become like theater? That's the really cool part. Yeah. Boll called his method the theater of the oppressed. And it's all about turning passive spectators into what he called spect actors. Spect actors. Instead of just watching a play unfold, the audience actually gets involved in shaping the narrative. Wow. Especially when it comes to tackling social issues head on. I'm already picturing audience members jumping on stage. You're not far off. <laughs> Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> The most well-known technique within the theater of the oppressed is called forum theater. Right. Imagine a short play that reflects a real-life problem. Okay. Maybe something like a student being pressured to participate in cyberbullying. Right. But here's the catch. The play ends with that problem unresolved. Oh, wow. I can see how that would leave the audience on edge. Wanting to do something. Wanting to find a solution. Precisely. And that's when the magic happens. Okay. In forum theater, the audience can actually yell, Esto OP if they have an idea for how the situation could play out differently. Oh, wow. They can even step onto the stage, replace an actor, and try out their solution. Wow, so it becomes a conversation, a kind of living experiment, where everyone is working together to untangle these complex issues. I love that. And speaking of putting these ideas into action, that's where Thomas Giglioni comes in, right? This is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. Tell me everything about him. Giglioni is a perfect example of someone who understands the power of this kind of interactive theater. Yes. He's got this incredibly diverse background, worked in education, specialized in conflict resolution, even served as a court-appointed mediator. Those are some seriously relevant skills. Right. So how does he actually bring all of that to the stage, or rather to real life situations. Well, one of the most fascinating things about Giglioni is that he doesn't shy away from tough topics, huh? especially those impacting young people today. Okay. He's deeply involved in education, currently serving as co-chair of a school council. Wow. And he sees firsthand how issues like cyberbullying, social media pressures, even video game addiction are affecting kids. Absolutely. And these are challenges that even adults are struggling to navigate. It feels like young people are on the front lines of a whole new world of social dynamics. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. And that's where Giglione's work becomes so crucial. Okay. He doesn't just stage performances. He uses the principles of forum theater to create custom role plays specifically tailored to help people especially young people understand and navigate these complex situations so it's almost like he's taking those s p moments from forum theater and weaving them into everyday life yeah he's giving people the tools to hit pause on a conflict and explore different paths forward exactly and what's particularly interesting is his use of puppet theater okay you might think puppets, really, but it's surprisingly effective, especially when dealing with sensitive topics like cyberbullying. I'm really curious about this, puppets addressing cyberbullying. It really works. Help me understand. Well, think about it. Puppets offer this layer of anonymity. For a young person who's been cyberbullied or is witnessing it, being able to express their feelings or try out different responses through a puppet can be incredibly empowering and less intimidating. It's like giving them a voice without having to like put themselves directly on the line. Right. Which can be incredibly freeing. Especially in those charged situations. Exactly. That makes so much sense. And this isn't just Giglioni's hunch, is it? 
didn't he actually present on this at a conference? He did. He presented a paper at a STEAM conference okay. on using puppetry to boost 21st century skills. Wow. He talked about how building and manipulating puppets can actually help young people develop their communication, critical thinking, even collaboration abilities. Right. And when you think about the complexities of navigating the online world, right. those skills are essential. It's fascinating how he's taking this ancient art form and making it relevant to the very modern challenges of the digital age. Mm -hmm. It's like this unexpected bridge between the past and the present. And it sounds like his work goes beyond just those customized role plays. It does. Tell me more about the organizations he's founded. Absolutely. It's like he takes those core principles of the theater of the oppressed and finds all these amazing ways to apply them. Okay. For example, he founded Eco Puppet Kids, okay. an organization that uses recycled materials to teach puppetry and environmental awareness. Talk about a win-win. He's combining creativity, environmentalism, and social change all in one package. That's incredible. Right. And there's more. He also founded We Agree Mediators. Okay. Is another example of how he takes those theatrical tools and applies them to real world conflict resolution. Okay, I see a pattern here. It's all about using performance and play to help people understand each other and find common ground. And when you think about how much of the online world is driven by conflict and misunderstanding, it feels like Giglioni is onto something really important. It's like he's saying, we've got these amazing tools for exploring conflict in a safe and constructive way, so why not use them? And it's not just about resolving conflict, it's about prevention too. Right. By giving young people these tools early on, he's equipping them to navigate the digital world more thoughtfully and responsibly. And to be resilient. Which brings us to a really critical point in all of this, the very real threat of cyberbullying. Before we dive into the numbers, I'm curious, how big of an issue do you think this is for young people today? Unfortunately, I think it's more pervasive than many people realize. Yeah. The internet has opened up so many incredible opportunities for connection, but it's also created new avenues for harassment and cruelty. You're absolutely right, and the statistics are really alarming. One of the sources we have a guide for caregivers on, cyberbullying, found that nearly a third, three in 10 young people report being cyberbullied. That's yeah. a staggering number. It means this is something that's impacting the lives of countless young people every single day. It paints a stark picture of the challenges young people face in the digital age, and it underscores why Giglioni's work is so important. He's not offering a quick fix. He's providing young people with the tools and the agency to become active participants in shaping a more positive and respectful online culture. And to be resilient. It takes Thomas little time to adapt to new environments. Within a short period, Thomas has met friends with many local youth who want to help him in his work and his journey to discover Vietnam.